Today I wanna to discuss the types of clients that I think should maybe avoid deadlifting. I don't really say that very often. I really like deadlifting. I like people being safe though too. And sometimes in my experience, uh, a very particular type of, I guess, posture has been associated with deadlifting pain or back pain during deadlifting. Um, and that particular posture, the, the, the times that I've had, I think there's two, at least that I can remember, where people have had splitting back spasms or back aches during a, a set, either a squat or a deadlift, is the type of person who has a really steep low back curve. And I'm trying to exaggerate it because my back's pretty flat and it's kind of hard to see that. But they have this butt sticking out. They got a lot of back tone right here. If they're laying on the ground, you can fit your whole hand underneath them or underneath their low back, right? So what's going on here? So with this, you have your erector spinae, your spinal erectors, your low back muscles turning on and compressing. And so what they do is they, they ideally help keep your back safe, but if they're on and they shouldn't be on, they actually add stress to your back. And so those muscles are right alongside the back, but they're you know on the back side of the spine. So when they contract, they compress really, really hard, but they also start to bend things. And then you get this tight psoas muscle, if you've ever heard about that, this tight psoas muscle where you go to your chiropractor and they say your psoas is tight and you're turned and stuff and they go in there and they dig in your guts and they massage it and it hurts like hell. Uh, all of those things are tied together. Those psoas muscles are on the front side of the spine, but they also pull the spine into a, a more bending position, right? Because they're angling forward a little bit more and they pull your spine forward with them. But they also add to the compression. And so you get this extra stress. It's like you're always holding you know, a 200 pound deadlift, uh, but you're also starting to move your spine under it. And you know the research from uh, Stuart McGill, Dr. Stuart McGill, has shown us that the spine can only take so many flexion and extension, so much movement under load. And so we need to try to limit the amount of movement that happens of our spine under load, or else we're gonna put the discs at risk. And I'd encourage you to get away from thinking about discs and thinking about necessarily nerves. What I'd just say is, if I have this low back curve, I got more pressure and I'm gonna be more sensitive, okay? And, and we just know that's true, right? I'm increasing activity and that makes my nerves more sensitive. So, if you do have this really steep low back curve, if you filmed yourself and you've noticed that and you're like, hey, that looks kinda weird, I didn't know I had that. Well, instead of deadlifting at this point, maybe you try a single leg variation. So the single leg variation, one, limits the amount of load that you can use because you have to balance now. But two, uh, it, it also, loading one leg at a time still lets you overload some of those muscles, but it also drives your hips in different positions. And so, <laughs> Try not to be too vague here, but I'm trying not to go into too much specifics. When you walk, your pelvic bones move like this. And so we get something, some of that when we do a single leg deadlift. My one leg will, uh, or my one side of my hip will roll back, the other side will roll forward, and then they'll switch when I come up to the top. And what we've noticed is that when you can do one side at a time, or when you do do one side at a time, <laughs> do do, when you do one side at a time, you can, uh, you, can, you can emphasize the position that takes that low back curve away. And so that is where I want you to start focusing yourself. If you are indeed this type of person, if you have that steep low back curve, you need to find a way to reduce it first and foremost. And so you might find push-ups to be really good as long as you are cueing them effectively. When you do your push-up, 
you can't be just letting your hips sag like this because it's only gonna reinforce your arch. You gotta bring your hips up, you gotta bring your belly up towards the sky, and you have to roll your hips back. You have to tuck your tailbone between your legs like you're trying to, you're a scared dog and you're trying to hide your tail and your butt smells. Okay, so we tuck this and now I feel my abs. And as I do my push-ups, I'm gonna keep feeling my abs. And if I lose them, okay, I gotta stop and I gotta find them again, okay? And I can use that as an accessory exercise for progressing myself into the deadlift. Other things you can do, I've liked the full rock back. You're, uh, you're kneeling down on the ground, your hands are on the ground. I'm just gonna do it because we have a camera. Um, you're right here and same principles, right? I'm tucking those hips, I feel those abs and I'm gonna push myself away from the ground to help get even more ab. And then I'm gonna breathe out to get even more ab. And then I try to hang on to that ab while I inhale. And that position can be really effective for a lot of people, especially when you have that extra tone. Other things you can do, uh, you can grab your couch pillow because we're in my living room and you can lay on your back, but you put your tailbone on the pillow and it tilts your hips up like this. So it's kind of like I'm laying in a hammock and my butt starts to curve up towards the sky as I do this. But what I really feel is I feel my low back, my microphone fell out of my pocket. I feel my low back push into the ground. And you know, I said earlier, if you lay on your back, these people with their arched back, you can usually fit your hand under their low back. Here, I'm reducing that ability. And so now I can't get my hand under there. My back is more relaxed and I'm unlocking my hips, I'm unlocking my low back, and I'm allowing myself to start to learn what that feels like, and I'm just laying the groundwork for progressing into deadlifts. After that, watch some of my other videos about cues that you can do for deadlifting. I need to find the abs, <sighs> unlock the knees, reach forward, exhale, same kinds of positions, but now I'm on my feet. I can even uh, squat against a wall. Let's see if this works. So this is, we're gonna pretend this is a wall and I'm gonna pretend, you know, just like I was on the ground, I'm gonna round my back into the wall and I'm gonna reach forward like this. Anything that helps you take that curve out, right? Anything that helps you get those outer lower abdominals, anything that helps you exhale more, anything that helps you relax, sometimes you just gotta sleep more. And we're not talking about that in these videos, but if you are a holistically minded person, maybe you are considering your nutrition and your sleep habits and your stress management as well. And so those are my thoughts. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below.